I 110% believe that some form of gardening journal can make a huge difference to your gardening and therefore your garden. I think whether you're a beginner or experienced, doing this in a way that suits you can really just make your garden the envy of your neighbours. Let's talk about it then. Gardening journals, why they're such an amazing thing, what puts people off or makes people quit, and then as usual, let's see if we can sprinkle a little bit of Eli magic and see if we can come up with a version that works for you and you and you and maybe me. Number one, I'm going to, I'm just going to lay this out there. Number one, I think gardening journals are for all of us, not just beginners. They're probably the most useful way to learn that we have as gardeners. Well, okay, unless maybe you've got an amazing uncle that gardens and has maybe been gardening for like 35 years and is teaching you, that's awesome. We're not all that lucky. But it is that experience thing. So your gardening uncle is teaching you from his experience. My gardening journal is my experience. I'm learning from that. And it's this cyclical thing of thinking about things, learning about things, putting them into practice, and then recording and reflecting on what you've learned from that practice. And that's the things that are good as well as the things that are bad. And then you take what you've learned, what you've reflected on, what you've learned from the reflections, and you put it into practice again. And this carries on this cycle, and that's how we learn. And let's be honest, we could be doing that for 20 years, but we're not going to retain all of that. We're not going to remember it all. And that's what you put in your journal. So some examples of how that's worked for me personally then. Let's think about courgettes, or zucchinis you may call them. I know that now is not the time to put my courgettes out into the garden. They are incredibly susceptible to hard frosts. They're not happy in the cooler temperatures. So I know that even though I can bring them on in my greenhouse, I can't put them out into my garden until June because I know that I'm likely to get frost until maybe third week to the end of May. And I know this because over the years in my journal, I've been recording when we've had frosts and temperatures and the general weather. So I know that's when it warms up in my garden. I also know that one year when I was learning this, the frost killed off my courgettes. So I've learned from experience and I've got records that help me to put that experience into practice. Now, that's one side of garden journaling. It's the recording, the things you've done and the things you've learned. And where it comes into things for the more experienced gardeners, that's the organisation and planning side. So you may want to plan out when you're going to sow seeds or transplant plants. That's really good to record as well. And the way I use it for my organisation and planning is I actually use it like a to-do list as well. So I have all the things I'm going to be doing, including all the seeds I'm sowing and when. I keep that in my journal too, and it keeps me right. And the thing is, I always have it in the greenhouse with me. So when I'm working away and transplanting, it's here. So what is it that tends to put people off then? Now, I have actually spent the last five months looking into this and I've been asking you guys what it is about your gardening journal that you think is amazing, but also what are the things you don't like? I asked, do you use paper or are you a digital gardener? And it was really interesting the results I got. Those of you who still kept a paper-based journal on the whole, you all talked about how it was awesome to have that time to sit and just have time to yourself, maybe with a little beverage of choice, and you could fill in your journal of an evening, spend maybe half an hour updating it. You liked that mindfulness and you enjoyed the act of actually writing in it. But on the flip side of that, quite a lot of people, 
an awful lot of people were saying they didn't keep a journal because they felt they just didn't have time. Mm, I think this bed's maybe a bit damp. Which, let's be honest, time is a massive factor. If maybe you're like us, we have full-time jobs which aren't in the city we live in, so we spend a lot of time away from home for work. So we tend to try and fit all of our gardening into the weekend, but we've got other hobbies and pastimes and passions and responsibilities all of which are pulling on our time. So that's maybe why a lot of you spoke about having some sort of journal on maybe your phone. A digital thing on your phone might be easier because it's pretty much always in your pocket. You can be taking photos while you're out in the garden and recording them straight into your digital journal. Now I've tried both these systems. Mostly I use digital systems like you guys have seen my um, spreadsheet planner that I use for planning all my growing and sewing. But over the last few months I've deliberately been using a notebook because I wanted to see if I could come up with a method that would work both as a paper version and as a digital version so you had the choice and that it was customisable to suit what you needed. So that's what I've been looking into. And I have to say, I'm super positive about both. I'm kind of using both, but as you guys know, I've always been more into the digital. So I'm finding it amazing how useful I'm finding just carrying a notebook around with me. And that's one of the things I've discovered is I've always thought of two sides to gardening journaling. There is the traditional version we all hear about, which is where we're reflecting on what we're learning and we're recording things we see and things that happen, like frost dates or the general weather, the rainfall, pests, you know, all of that kind of thing. But also the planning and organising side that a lot of more experienced gardeners get quite into with things like my seed sowing plan. But actually the two are joined together so let me give you an example and it's one of the things I've been doing in my notebook. Things like your spring bulbs. So I'm looking at these and I'm going, this is amazing, it looks great. But I'll record when they flower and when they stop flowering because that lets me think about, well, if these start flowering in, say, April and end in May, I may want other bulbs here that flower in May so that I've got constant colour. So that ties in with both. I'm reflecting and recording on when things are blooming and what I'm learning, but I'm also using that information to plan when I plant things and where I plant them so that I get the result I want. In this case, getting colour for as long as possible in that spot. But this system I can use in a paper notebook as well as the digital way as well. And it is like this, it is very simply something you've probably heard of. It's called bullet journaling. Now, I'm not talking about the putting fancy calligraphy headers and drawing big plans and calendars and things, although a lot of people do use it for that. I'm talking very much on the organisation of my journal. So I've organised it into sections and I've taken bits from the bullet journaling system that really work well for me in this. Namely, I've got what's called a future log. And that lets me just quickly jot down things that I know I'm going to have to do or think about at another time. Now, I don't have to know when that's going to be. I'm just putting them in the future log, which is essentially a big list. But it does mean when I do know when they want to get done, I can put them into that correct place. So for doing that, I've also got logs that are monthly and those months are broken into weeks. Now you can take it further if you want, I don't have to, but it means I can be moving tasks from my big generic future log into the appropriate month and then week to suit. And I can also move them between because we always have those tasks we don't do when we say we're gonna. So I can just move them on. And that's the main element of bullet journaling that I've taken for this. But I've also taken that organization and sections and I've created the more reflective element of my journal as well. So things like 
I mentioned earlier that I've got a spot in my journal where I record the weather, I record frost dates, so that I know when to expect my first and last frost dates. I record overnight temperatures, so I know when I can put my tomato plants in the greenhouse, for instance. Um, I also record things like when I see pests in the garden, so that I know what month in spring to expect the aphids, and I record how I've dealt with the aphids and how successful it's been. So lots of things like that. Now, you find a system that works for you, but if it's helpful, I've put a link in the description to this video that's got the digital version of this garden journal, garden planner that I've made. Even if you want to do a paper version, you can use that to help you set yours up. Now remember, it's a link to my file on Google Drive. You won't be able to edit my files, but you will be able to make your own copy into your Google Drive that you can then use the way you need to. I've even got a section in there where I take notes, anything useful at all that I find out from say a YouTube video or a blog I'm reading and I've got a little section where I record all of those. So it's something I keep with me when I'm watching that type of thing as well and take little notes. Always handy for the future. And you know, you should be recording in yours now the things I'm telling you. So all of these amazing journaling ideas you've just learned are absolutely going to help you take your gardening to the next level and you'll be the envy of all of your friends and your neighbours. But just journaling on its own is not going to be enough. If you want to really raise your game 110%, then you need to watch this video next. This is my video on how I created my succession sewing plan for everything that I'm sewing and growing in the garden this year.